Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode we begin with sending supplies to our lunar base and I have decided to send a Big Mac. Well, at least that's what it reminded me of after I finished with it. Um, well, two buns and uh, the, the food, in this case water and oxygen in the middle. And so we've got uh, plenty of tanks of that. Uh, I think for three Kerbals it's like uh, 750 days or so. And uh, of course our base will have more than that, but uh, I'm sure it'll be able to cover the time it takes for us to conduct our initial EVE missions. So uh, that's the main goal of this. Uh, of course the Big Mac has this little tower on top and an engine on the bottom. But I've I left off the lights deliberately because, well, let's face it, uh, we have plenty of lights going on at the base already, so we don't need any more. I'll have to try and remember to turn some of those off, but uh, let's just uh, get this over there first. And I've put this on the feather, feather, because I decided it was a pretty good launch vehicle that last time we tested it with the egg, and uh, it managed to splash down and stay safe, so that's important. The descent, though, is quite harrowing, if you recall. Uh, getting through Delhi Reentry, it tends to spin quite a lot, uh, so I'll be looking to see whether that's uh, going to be a serious issue or whether that's consistently survivable. That's my question right now. Uh, whether this, uh, the whole spin thing during the ascent is something that will always survive or whether it's going to have some trouble. I did put solar panels on the Big Mac, uh, so we've got that though. Not any always open solar panels. I think it's, I think it's got enough battery power to survive uh, a transfer anyway. But uh, anyway, it should be all right. Okay, well, uh, let's get this going because I do want to get to the EVE mission. Uh, it'll take me some time to get this down to the surface of the moon. So, yeah, let's go. The Feather, of course, is a very squat rocket. Um, intentionally, of course, because uh, that will allow it to land safely without tipping over. And so here we have it. And let us just go ahead and launch. So the Big Mac uh, isn't intended to be uh, returned, it doesn't have any parachutes on top. What it can do though, is if we can refuel it on the moon using uh, carbonite mining and refuel its tanks, it can then uh, lift off off of the moon and rendezvous with the station around the moon. There at the station it can grab food, water and oxygen and then bring those back down to the moon. So we'll only have to send food, water and oxygen to the the orbiting station assuming we're not producing it on the ground of course so uh, yeah so that's the plan with this I tried putting uh, extra cons control surfaces on these little wings but uh, turns out it's very hard to orient them properly without uh, without the point nine zero tools okay I believe we're all right for fairing separation oh the wings Ow, 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 ow. Oh, that could have almost been bad. Alright, forgot about that part. And that's orbit for us. All nice and neat. And... Do I see any reason to not to separate this mission? No, it should be powered and everything. It's good. Let's test attitude control. Yeah, that's fine. Why doesn't SAS want to? S oh, because Smarty SS. Is on. Okay, good. That is all right. Okay. All right, but let's jump back to oh. The inside of the fuel tank. That was not right, but yeah to this portion which we will now attempt to bring down let's get the reserve fuel transferred gotta go with 24.8 kilometers this time let's get around to the burn point oh well, this thing tough to control this thing honestly even with the big reaction wheel on it Alright, that'll do. 
Now again, we need to reserve quite a bit of fuel to make a soft touchdown. Because the parachutes at the top of this won't be able to handle that on their own. Oh, and for anybody thinking about going in nose first, that's not an option. Not only would the parachutes burn up, but uh, we wouldn't be able to flip around in time, I don't think. And uh, though that would make the control surfaces much more effective. It's more or less, yeah, it's, it's a sort of a weird configuration to have the control surfaces on that side coming in like this. What I might consider doing is putting some additional, uh, the ones that are all moving, canards, something like that, the horizontal stabilizer types, and putting those on in the middle here. Looks like we're coming in too high. I generally do come in too high. It's easier to correct that than coming in too low, of course, and coming in too low you might hit those mountains there. On the bright side, if we overshoot, we can still survive by splashing down. We saw that this could remain stable when, spl when splashing down, so that is an option. Now, the thing is, trying to keep this retrograde instead of deflected, otherwise our parachutes are somewhat in jeopardy. Whoa, 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 don't do that. Wow, this thing goes all over the place. I'm trying to fight against the direction it's going in, so like that, I'm going in the opposite direction at that point, but it tends to... Let me just flip it around, uh, not flip it around, uh, spin it, spin it, spin it. So that the parachutes don't get into any trouble. You can see they're trying to overheat, but... If it's spun, they'll get more even heating. Not exactly the point I want to keep it at spinning, but this will keep them um, cool enough. Okay, we have to be careful about parachutes. This is not stock. Have to wait until 280 meters per second. This sure isn't any sort of Falcon 9 first stage, that's for sure. Okay, parachutes. Parachutes. There we go. Let's get that off. Even the parachutes are struggling to get this nice and upright. Wow, this thing. Just get right when we have full deployment, okay? Okay, and add some thrust. That'll be good. Okay, looks stable to me. Red cover vessel. Well, all the crazy flipping around and doing this and that aside, uh, it looks like the Feather might be my most reliable, recoverable uh, launcher. Very interesting. Okay, to the mission. Okay, I've plotted our transfer. It'll take us to, hopefully, uh, 47 kilometers away from the surface of the moon. Alright, here we go. Ooh, this burn is going to take longer than I thought it would. Well, we're going to be a little bit off on this burn. Not much TWR on this uh, with the LV-909 trying to push this almost 14 ton vessel. There's an encounter and let's check our periapsis. All right, that'll do. Uh, we could get closer a little bit. Or, well, it's auto-saving now. Yeah, okay, let's stop here. Okay. All right. 
So even without light, uh, seven hours, well, eight, almost eight hours worth of battery, which will get us there, but uh, I'm sure we'll get some light on the way. And yep, yeah, let's go. Okay, here we go. Lunar Sphere of Influence. And let's not belabor point. I just need to get into orbit first, and then we'll correct inclination every and everything to set up our encounter and... Well, not encounter, but uh, our landing. We've done this before. Should be pretty straightforward. Now, thinking about it, there is a side benefit to having physics lag at the base. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to land these things if uh, physics is going slower than normal. Okay, 50 by 44 is fine. We will take that. And now... Well, heck, uh, let me uh, go out to to the space center, turn, uh, switch to the base, turn off some lights, and then proceed. Okay, so here's the light tower. Really, probably superfluous at this time of day, but let's let's turn off some lights, shall we? Um, it's a little bit uh, tough to decide, but I guess it's got a lot of lights. Okay, is everything still very well lit? Oddly enough, not that. Wow. Very, very specific lack of light on that module. Hmm. Now, the most downward facing lights probably can go off. Really, it only looks like it's rendering like one light here. I wonder what that's all about. But okay, so far we've cut down on half of our lighting here. Now, we don't have any lights on the on the um, Big Mac, so we, I think eight will be fine. I think the physics rate is going all right. Frame rate, well, we'll have to see. I mean, there's nothing dynamic going on here. There's nothing that's really testing the physics. Nothing is moving a lot. So we'll have to see if there's enough or if I have to do more. But we've turned off half our lights, so that's something. All right, let's go on to uh, land our supplies. Okay, here we go. Descent path along with inclination correction is already plotted. We just need to time warp a little bit. And see if that did the trick. Looks okay, maybe a little bit far north, but uh, we'll see as we get there. I'm not gonna target anything there. I haven't figured out that bug yet. Coming in high here, obviously. I suppose it's worth pointing out. The reason I'm coming in high is because I did the retro burn along with the inclination change. So I did the inclination change and the retro burn here. Uh, if I wanted to come in low, I'd do the retro burn on the opposite side from the base and then do the inclination change here. I do them separately, but that costs a little bit more delta V. Uh, but that would uh, result in a low pass over the base. Gotta be a bit careful here. The thrust weight ratio of this is not huge. Though it's getting larger as we burn, of course. Okay, physics range time. Alright. A little bit inconvenient when going at full thrust during physics range transition. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, this is not what I want to do. Come on. More like this. Ooh, physics not going very fast actually right now. So maybe more lights off? And I'm going too fast right now. I'm going way too fast. Possibly we'll bounce. Uh, 
Okay, okay, okay. Just barely made it. Now, I need to figure out... There we go, there we go. This way. That one's close. Okay, just sort of hovering along here. Oh, I forgot to turn off the gold bug's lights. The gold bug is still lighting up the Moon Master there. Because it's got all its lights on. Well, I guess this will do. I mean, I don't know how far the pipes can stretch. But... This seems like a rather large vehicle. I'd rather set down here than anything else. Let's see how far those pipes can go. Alright, we seem to be set down just fine. It's pretty big compared to the rest of the base you can see. It's because it's carrying a lot of stuff. But everything looks good. Uh, let me switch to the gold bug and turn off those lights. Not the helmet miner. Not that. Alright, gold bug. Lights off. We should transfer these guys. Uh, let me uh, get uh, Jorvi to EVA here. Oh, that's where they come out. Oh, it, oh, that's interesting. And I want him to hook up the the Big Mac. Unfortunately, I really didn't think that he'd come out from there. I thought he'd come out from this crew hatch here. Oh, I guess I while I'm over here, I can grab one of these. I can grab the pipe end point that I left here, right? I should also just hook up these supplies back up to the base. They're here anyway. It's not full, of course, but uh, I just might as well just link it up. Uh, will uh, Jorvi be able to get the thing linked up without EVAing? Let's see. Link. Yes. I actually was thinking that I might have to EVA him up and uh, step onto this location in order to get the link done, but uh, it looks like that's not necessary. Good. Now let's get the other link together too. And then Jorvi can enter the base, because now the base will have more food and water and oxygen. Let's call them consumables altogether, so more consumables. We'll probably have to EVA to get to that. Not EVA, uh, use his pack. Uh huh. I don't know what that means still, but alright. Okay, sort of on the wrong side of the thing. I want to get him into the the habitat, the curbitat. Okay, board. And now let's take a look at our resource situation. So, the curbitat Yakko Wacko 3 crew has uh, 813 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. That's great. Um, there's nobody in the emergency habitat right now. Uh, the Mooner Station has 156 days. That seems a little bit troublesome. That seems like it's a little bit tight. Um, Kerbin Station, one crew, 477 days. Duna Station, 507 days. As soon as we get a Duna transfer opportunity, we should send some more over there. Um, the CRT... Uh, around Duna has 705 days, only one crew. Goldbug has two crew now, 350 days. And the power plant, uh, that's the Moonmaster actually. Oh, let's change its name. 
uh, but it's got uh, 152 days, which is a little bit tight. Moonmaster, and you are a rover. Okay, so now it's the Moonmaster. It is a rover, and it's also a little bit tight on the days. Let's let's see how long it'll take to transfer to Eve, uh, to at least uh, get the phase angle right. Okay, I think we should be all right. We're watching out for two things. We need Eve to be behind Kerbin by 54 degrees, and we need Duna to be ahead of Kerbin by 45 degrees to launch the Duna side of things. So let's time warp a bit and see how it goes. We do have other contracts to consider as well, this Class A asteroid contract. We've got these anomalies on Minmus. Got a lot of stuff to check out, but I'm most interested in the Eve thing. Because uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to build some sort of science vessel. Once it's done with Eve, it'll move on to other locations. We'll just refuel it and then move it along. Uh, so it won't be just uh, just an Eve station. It'll be a science vessel with probes that can land on locations and do some science. Okay, I think that's about right. I think that's about uh, 54 degrees there. So uh, clearly the Eve encounter first. So let's let's quickly uh, jump back to one of our missions so I can check how the supplies are doing. Let's say the gold bug. Well, no, that's lag station. So uh, how about Kerbin Station Core? That makes sense. Okay, here we are, Kerbin Station, and what is the life support situation like? Okay, here it's uh, 367, Lunar Station 1, 46 days only. And where's the Moon Master? 42 days only. Okay, 46 days, 42 days. I think I'm going to have uh, Mike transfer out of the Moon Master and into the Kerbitat. Let me do that first and then we'll worry about uh, transferring supplies to Minner Station 1 uh, after I... hmm... we do have the other station right? This got... does it have supplies? Carbon Mining Station... Carbonite Mining Station. Uh, not, not, not enough to uh, bear two more crew and it's not worth it. It's better to just resupply Mooner Station 1. But let me get uh, Mike out of the Moon Master. Alright Mike, uh, just uh, leave the keys in the ignition and let's go. It's amazing how dark the, the nuclear power plant and the Big Mac are right now. Uh, oh, it is a full module. Okay, um... Colony Control Center sounds like the place then. The Great Debug Console. Okay, uh, let's see now. How many crew that has? No space for more poo. Okay. Um, punch cards full. No, sca no space for more punch cards. Okay. So we got that going for us. And the Kerbitad includes all of this, is it? Is that how it works? Yeah. Oh, but uh, it doesn't seem to include the aeroponics module in it. Looks like the aeroponics module is not included in the, this complex for CLS. CLS doesn't like the way I've got it connected to the inflatable habitation module, I guess. The, yeah, this, this portion is separate. So there's actually two separate modules. There's this portion of the base and then the aeroponics and greenhouse portion of the base. Well, for now, I guess that's all right. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, we've got uh, Mike settled in. And so that should be... So we've got four crew in the Kerbitat now. All right. 
let me take a look at what I can build as far as a Eve station slash science ship. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to keep this one as sort of a surprise this time. Uh, I've called it Explorer X for now. And we've got uh, seven mainsails on the bottom of this launcher. This launcher is not reusable. Uh, the actual Explorer X craft is quite heavy. And so uh, we'll just have to go with this. I'm a little bit nervous about what this is actually going to do. Uh, it, uh, it, the craft is so large that these, uh, these little uh, side boosters aren't really going to separate. They're uh, permanently attached to the body. Uh, I just left it that way. And so, yeah, bit complicated. Uh, I'm going to keep it a surprise. So let's just go. Chad Bro and Podzer are sort of our victims here. Uh, and I say that because this is, uh, this is iffy. This is uh, definitely iffy. So let's find out if this is gonna work. All right, uh, yep, let's go. So uh, the Explorer X craft will be able to fulfill the station contract around EVE. It has probes that it can deploy, and so we can uh, fulfill the rest of the contract like that. Ah, but probes don't have parachutes, so landing on uh, EVE might be a little bit difficult. And then there's the whole, you know, oh, we've got overheating here. Hold on, let me throttle back a bit. Uh, there's the whole deadly re-entry thing. That's a little bit complicated. I don't think we can error break around EVE very easily with, uh, with the Explorer X. It just doesn't have the heat shielding for that sort of thing, I don't think. It'd be touchy and I wouldn't want to risk it. So it'll have to use its own power to uh, to get into orbit around EVE, which is possible. It's got a lot of power. It's got uh, about 3000 delta V. As you can see from the stage, the launcher is just one stage. I was a little bit lazy. Technically with seven mainsails I could get this thing to lift a lot more than it's doing right now. If I just did some clever staging. Okay, uh, the the payload is very unwieldy, so I'm a little bit worried about uh, whether things might sway a lot. So far, it looks all right. Of course, there are a lot of struts involved. So the facility can uh, can carry six or more Kerbals, but. Uh, we we're only sending two, enough to run the research lab. The payload cannot uh, make orbit if the launcher fails, by the way. The, pa uh, the payload, uh, while it has 3000 delta V, or uh, almost 3000 delta V, it does not have uh, the thrust to weight ratio. The center of the rocket is larger than the side boosters, so the center engine is going to burn for longer than the rest. I expect that this booster will be able to help us out in, uh, in our EVE transfer, so I hope that I'll have some fuel left over for that. I think it will. I'm probably not going to drop the fairings until we reach orbit, just because they might knock uh, these little uh, side pods. Okay, so far so good. Surprised. Uh, I guess my struts worked out pretty well, because there's a lot less wiggling than I thought there would be. Okay, now let's shut down there. Set pitch to zero now. And we'll just coast up to Apoapsis. I guess there's no point uh, carrying the fairings with us right now. Let's, I think, separating them here. Well, let's get into space first, and then I can separate them. Okay, fairings are clear. And now you see the craft in its uh, folded state, if you will. It's not quite deployed yet. We'll get to that. For right now, you can see why I was worried about it wiggling. There's really no way to attach. 
the reason the fairing had to be the size that it was was because, of course, the I'm limited to three meter bases. So it was three meter base, and that'd be really wide and ungainly. I would have liked at least a five meter base, but uh, no luck there. I could size the tanks to uh, larger sizes, but I haven't unlocked the technology to resize the fairings. So that's why the the rocket had the shape that it did. And I checked. I don't have enough uh, science in order to unlock the the technology I need for larger fairings. That would take 550. So I think this will be a single stage to EVE launcher. Well, it was expensive enough for that, that's for sure. Okay, so that is orbit. We still have plenty of fuel in this stage, 1,100 meters per second of delta V. Let's plot for EVE, and we'll use this stage to do it. That'll leave the, the Explorer with its own fuel to do other things. Okay, so when combined with uh, mid-course plane change, we've got 10,000 kilometers here. Uh, we should do the initial burn first and then fix that number once we get to the mid-course plane change. So I'm not going to uh, fine-tune it right now. Let us just say prograde, not prograde, node. I'll let uh, Smart ASS point me in the right direction because uh, it's tough to turn this thing. It doesn't have too much reaction control power. It's only got uh, one reaction wheel in the Explorer itself right at the top there. Oh, incidentally, for the two Kerbals, the Explorer has 710 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. So they're very well provided for. It is definitely going to be a, a journey of many years for Chadbro and Podzer. Yep, but now we're just down to one main sail, so that's a little bit uh, that threw the calculation a bit off. Okay, we are now on escape trajectory. Okay, I think that should be close. Not quite there. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Eve periapsis 3,000 kilometers. Uh, let's try and adjust that a little bit more. Okay, 235 kilometers sounds fine. And that'll cost us 346.7 meters per second at the mid-course plane change. This stage has 92 meters per second left. I don't think it's worthwhile to have it tag along with us all the way out there. So I'm just going to dispense with it. Okay, now the tricky part. Now I am going to deploy the engine pods. You see here, uh, this, is, this is one of the probes here. And so right now it's all very tightly packed and that's a little bit dicey. So I have these engine pods. And the probes all have docking ports at the top so that they can return to this Explorer X once they've done their thing. I think that's as far as those go. And then we can also deploy the habitation ring. Okay, let's ignite the engines. Okay, engines ignited. Uh, I don't want to add any thrust because uh, we might uh, mess up our current maneuver node. But uh, yeah, okay, so let's get in close to the probes here. You can see small docking port on top, the Clampatron docking port junior, uh, reaction wheel, probe core, octo. Uh, batteries. These little things are procedural RCS tanks with mod propellant. This is uh, whoop, this one. Nope, not that. Ah, the AES RCS block is the RCS I'm using on them. They need the RCS to dock back up. 
they have only two of these little LV-1R liquid fuel engines, and then that's the fuel tank, landing legs if necessary, and uh, may or may not be necessary depending on what their mission is. They have a thermometer and a seismometer, and that's it. So they do not have um, what you call it, uh, good container or the or the science junior. Now. Once uh, some of these are used up, maybe they've landed and they can't uh, return to this vessel, we could send other probes to it. We could have replacement probes, we can have larger probes, maybe probes with a Science Junior or Goo container, and we'll just have them dock up with this. And uh, they'll have room. If they're a bigger probe, they can just stick out this away. They'll have to be tall rather than fat, So, uh, but there is a little bit of room here if they need to be a little bit wide. But uh, yeah, otherwise that's the idea, and so the the engine pods extend out because we need room for these guys to leave and dock back up. Uh, they they all have antennas as well, by the way, uh, as does the main body of this. Uh, this is fuel tanks for refueling them. So uh, each one carries about 58 units of liquid fuel. So you can see this fuel tank here already can uh, refill them 10 times. And there's another fuel tank here. These can also be used to refill these engine pods. There's no fuel line going from these to the engine pods. They'd have to be refueled manually. Probably I'd refuel the nose, uh, the nose tank because uh, that, that'll be, make it easier to even things out. But yeah, uh, that is the Explorer X here. The LV909s are the engines for it. It's got a small docking port in front and a large docking port in the back solar panels all over the place including on the engine pods and actually uh, uh, emergency ones here if necessary but I don't think they will be. It itself does not have any experiments, no go experiment, no science junior. It does have the science lab though. Okay so that's that's everything said for it I think. I'm not going to do the the whole uh, mission this time obviously uh, partly because we need to watch out for the supplies in our other areas. I think the main thing is Mooner Station 1. So we'll have to make sure to resupply that before this actually reaches its destination. Otherwise things will be getting a little bit dicey there. But yeah, so uh, look forward in the next episode to the activities or of the Explorer X with its crew Ponzer Kerman and Chadbro Kerman who are destined to explore EVE and send out their little probes to figure out what EVE is all about. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. Oh, interesting camera change. Anyway, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.